Hey, Bobby Trades! I wanted to do a video analysis update on something that is very important to me. I think that we've all been there. Uh, where we're reading about, or hearing about, an incredible, um, shocking news story. And then as we're processing it, you know, things just aren't start, things just don't, you know, quite add up. Right? They don't quite add up. And you start to wonder, is there more to the story than, you know, we're being told? And I think a lot of us uh, really might have felt like that on January 26th, 2020, when we found out that Kobe Bryant had died uh, in a helicopter crash. And um, this man was um, extremely influential and... Um, he was a leader of generations of young men all across the world um, in, in giving uh, what he called the Mamba mentality. You know, he really inspired a lot of young people, particularly men, uh, particularly in the Hispanic and black community. He inspired a lot of young men um, to really be the best versions of themselves. And so I know and I experienced and, and watched um, a lot of people really get hurt. Um, you know, even in my personal life and obviously, you know, around the world, we all kind of felt that together, you know. And I think there might have been more to the story. And as I've processed Kobe's death, or, or by the time Kobe's death happened, I, I'd kind of come to a realization that um, I'll get to in this video. But before Kobe's death happened, I remember uh, Juice World, um, a young rapper, died. And I had already come to the conclusion that um, many celebrities had signed contracts and uh, we're being ritually sacrificed. Um, what some say is that these people aren't being ritually sacrificed. They're going to exit stage left, so to speak. They're just going to leave the scene. Some people even believe they'll play other celebrities in the future. Um, I, I don't think that's a safe thing to think. I think it, the, the safe thing is to think they are being ritually sacrificed. Um, but I already come to the conclusion that um, that had happened by the time one of my really close friends got the news that Juice World, the young rapper, had died. And I saw how it hurt him. And I couldn't quite tell him, hey, that was a, a ritual sacrifice. You know, he, he might still be alive even. He might have exited stage left. You know, um, I, I just wanted to console him as a friend. Um, but I, I think that um, as I've come to process Kobe... Brian's death. There's a lot more to the story than we were told, so we're going to get right into it. I believe objectively in this video, I can show to anyone watching, and I really want you guys, I never say like and comment or any of that, like and subscribe, but I really want you guys to like and share this video and show it to people in your, your friend groups and your family um, and say, hey, this guy thinks, you know, that he, he can prove that Kobe was ritually sacrificed by a secret society and he believes he can prove that to you so that by the end of this video you'll believe it okay so there there's ignorance and there's nations ignorance is, is when you have the opportunity to know something you've been presented with the information and you say oh man that's that's silly i don't need to know that you know that weatherman saying there's going to be hurricanes and in, in you know august and in Florida, ah, it's beautiful right now. It's beautiful. He doesn't know anything, you know. And all of a sudden, woof, right? That's called ignorance, right? You had you you had the information available to you, you know. You ignored the hurricane warnings. Nations is when you didn't know, you didn't have the chance to know. You could have never known, even after you suffered the consequences of not knowing. No one could have really looked back. And said, yeah, but he should have known. They should have known. She should have known. 
right? No one, no one can objectively do that in nations the way they can in ignorance, right? So I want to re- remove nations from the equation. I want to remove, um, oh, they just didn't know from the equation. They could have never known. I want to say no. They were, they were shown this, and they had to say no. This was a coincidence. Was this a coincidence? Kobe Bryant died in a helicopter crash on January 26th, 2020. His death in a helicopter was foretold twice in the media. That's actually not true. It was foretold a third time that I'll get into in the next side slide. But these two were in the media objectively first. In 2011, a Nike commercial with Kobe and Kanye West ended with a fiery helicopter crash. The commercial, um, so th- this is a commercial I would encourage everyone watching this video, go look it up. And what's interesting is you're going to find it's hard to look up. If you look up 2011 Kobe and Kanye um, Nike commercial with helicopter crash, it's going to be, that's what I looked up. It's going to be very hard to find that commercial because um kobe's life ended with a helicopter crash so anytime you look up kobe bryant and helicopter crash you just get pictures and and videos and reports of his death right (laughs) well it's interesting uh, because you have to scroll through a few links before you find even when you look up commercial and even when you look up with kanye west you got to scroll through a, a few links to find the commercial that took place in 2011 and it's a nike commercial and it ends with Kobe Bryant having a basketball bomb and Kanye West is getting away in a helicopter and Kobe picks up a ticking basketball bomb and he throws it at uh, Kanye's helicopter and the helicopter explodes and it crashes into the basketball court and this is the end of the commercial, what you're looking at right now. This is the final shot of the commercial, a helicopter on fire with the Nike logo. I mean, this video is called Kobe Bryant Helicopter Crash 2011 Nike Commercial. Okay, so I want you to go look up Kobe Bryant Helicopter Crash 2011 Nike Commercial, and I want you to read the comments. Okay, there's a lot of people um, who don't, don't, no, don't have a, you know, they don't have, they're not going to go nearly as in depth as, as we're going to get into in this video. And they're saying this is sick. This is a sacrifice. And one of them pointed out to me, it's almost everyone. I mean, there really aren't any comments that are like, yeah, like, you know, um, <laughs> that that's just a coincidence, bro. Uh, everyone's kind of angry. One of them pointed out that in the, in the beginning of this commercial, the narrator is saying something like, because they're talking about him being the black mamba, right? Him, him having the mamba mentality, right? So the beginning of the commercial, the narrator says he kind of gets into this zone where he can see things before they happen right and so they're saying like the game kind of slows down for him right but someone in the in the comments pointed out that that was kind of sick that was kind of a sick little line to include he can see things before they happen and before they show um predictive programming of a helicopter crash involving kobe bryant ending in fiery flames uh that would happen you know just about nine ten years later anyway the more blatant one, right? There was a more blatant. There were two. There were two more blatant predictive programming um, pieces than that, right? So predictive programming is when you show the masses something before it happens because it's so shocking that if you didn't, they would call BS, right? That's kind of the idea. If they hadn't shown us this predictive programming, then when it happened, we would have said no way, <laughs> right? But there's there's another way they believe that there's some type of karmic deity, right? Um, and that because they told us before it happened that Kobe was going to be sacrificed, that now they're kind of, you know, free of their karmic justice. They're like, hey, we told them three times, right? We literally showed them a commercial of Kobe throwing a, a basketball bomb at a Kanye West helicopter and the helicopter crashing and exploding in fiery flames. We also showed them an episode of The Legends of Chamberlain Heights, 
uh, where Kobe is blatantly shown dying in a helicopter crash. I mean, it doesn't get, there's nothing really more to explain. This is a purple and yellow helicopter that you are looking at right now. This is Kobe Bryant in that helicopter that has crashed. He is holding two finals trophies and there are people standing next to him who say, oh, S, it's Kobe Bryant. Really? Really? So he, a commercial of him ends with a fiery helicopter crash. There's a cartoon of him dying in a helicopter crash. And part of me thinks the video should end there. But e even if, the, even in the video should end their territory. Here's another one. I didn't know this. Did you know this? Kobe faked a plane crash prank before he died. Right? So some people think, uh. You know, these people know when they're going to be sacrificed long before it happens, right? Chadwick Boseman played Jackie Robinson in the movie 42, and he died on the MLB's Jackie Robinson Day uh, in 2020 uh, when everyone in the MLB wears the number 42. In fact, it was even reported originally that he died at age 42, um, which uh, they've since had to change his age to 43 um, because too many people caught on, right? But before he was sacrificed, uh, before the actor who played Jackie Robinson in the movie 42 was sacrificed on Jackie Robinson Day, uh, where all the players wear number 42, and he was originally reported to die at age 42. Yeah, before that, um, he was asked in 2019, December 2019, so not very you know, long before it happened. Uh, Chadwick, are you excited for uh, Black Panther 2? I bet you can't wait. I bet you can't wait. He was like, no, I'll, I'm dead. I'm dead. And he didn't say, I'm dead, like the young, cool people say, I'm dead. Oh, I'm dead, bro. That had me dead, bro. I'm dead, bro. That was so funny. No. <laughs> Five times in an interview in 2019, Chadwick Boseman was asked about Black Panther 2. He didn't say anything besides, I'm dead. Hmm. Anyway, so some people believe that people who are victims of ritual sacrifice are even aware of it before it's going to happen. Kobe, you know, it kind of seems like it. So before this happened, uh, did you know that Kobe was involved in a daredevil prank with Rob Palinka? Really funny. So Rob Palinka, real high up in the Lakers uh, organization. Um, and he's got this really funny story with Kobe. Um, shortly after his retirement, the two set out on a helicopter ride. And Bryant didn't tell Palinka of his daredevil plan. The LA Times reported Bryant and the pilot looked at each other and Bryant nodded suddenly. Suddenly. To Palinka's horror, the helicopter resumed. Wait, so I, I didn't give enough space. Bryant and the pilot looked at each other, and Bryant nodded subtly, right? Hey, we're about to pull a heist on this guy who doesn't know what's about to happen, right? Suddenly, to Palinka's horror, the helicopter zoomed into military maneuvers designed to terrify the passengers. Wow. With the Coupe de Grasse coming near the end when the pilot shut off the engine in midair. Hmm. <laughs> Apparently, the helicopter floated toward the ground, and after a few moments of thrill panic, the pilot turned the engine back on and brought the two old friends to safety. Wow. So, Kobe Bryant was involved in a commercial where he throws a basketball bomb at a Kanye West in a helicopter, causing the helicopter to explode and crash in firing flames. There's a cartoon of Kobe Bryant dying in a helicopter crash, holding his finals trophies. And Kobe Bryant literally went up into a helicopter with another person, nodded at the captain, and had military maneuvers be... Uh, deployed to make it look like they're about to crash and even turned off the engine then turned it back on as a prank <laughs> man it's almost like they wanted to get into our heads that uh, Kobe Bryant was gonna die in a helicopter crash before it happened 
Uh, and they don't just do it before. They reaffirm it after. So post-sacrifice tribute, right? Lakers win the 2020 finals on National Father-Daughter Day, right? So big traumatic, traumatic, you know, death in the beginning of 2020, you know, leading to a, you know, a even more traumatic year, right? But it, for Lakers fans, you know, then they win the championship. Wow. And like how Chadwick Boseman died on Jackie Robinson Day, and it wasn't when Jackie Robinson Day normally was uh, because of the events of 2020. The finals weren't normally when uh, they usually are. So they were uh, relocated too, and they were they were relocated um, in, uh, sorry, I should say rescheduled and relocated to Disney World, uh, but they were rescheduled um, and they just happened to end on October 11th, 2020, which you may not have known is National Father-Daughter Day, right? So Kobe Bryant and his uh, daughter died in a helicopter crash, and then LeBron and um, the Lakers won the finals on National Father-Daughter Day. Isn't that sweet? Um, fun tidbit, uh, LeBron actually passed Kobe in the all-time scoring record the day before his death, and there was a bunch of, you know, black snakes on the court. Anyway, another post-death tribute, right? They got to keep reaffirming this. Uh, make sure to congratulate Karen Bryant because she uh, is the new GM of the L.A. Sparks. Congratulations, Karen. Um, oh, my bad. Don't just congratulate her for becoming a GM of the L.A. Sparks. Wish her happy birthday because Karen Bryant – the new general manager for the Los Angeles Sparks, that purple and yellow basketball team. Oh, her birthday's coming up. Yay! And guess when she's born? On 824, Karen Bryant becomes the new GM of a purple and gold Los Angeles basketball team. Like how Kobe's death and his career was commonly commemorated uh, with the numbers 8 and 24. And August 24th um, is written 824. Karen Bryant, born August 24th, like how Kobe Bryant wore 8 and 24. Hmm. Hmm. I'm sure like that Chamberlain Heights cartoon and the uh the nike commercial and um you know that little prank he pulled uh and you know them winning the championship on father daughter day that's just a coincidence and really i really think this is where the video should end it's hard for me to even get into the rest of it because this is just where objectively it's over so just pause the video right here like really pause the video i don't know what the time's gonna be but pause the video and just stop right here and show, show, show someone this first half of the video. All right, if they don't believe in, you know, secret societies or ritual sacrifice or conspiracy theories, uh, you know, they think uh, two airplanes can knock down three buildings, why don't you just stop the video and just show them this? Make them look you dead in the eye and say this is all a coincidence. All right, now let's get into a little more. The science of ritual sacrifice, more coincidences. Um, did you know three of the first five presidents died on July 4th? Our nation's Independence Day. It is a fact of American history that three of the five founding fathers, fa founding father presidents died on the Independence Day anniversary. But was it just a coincidence? It is the fact uh, that John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and James Monroe died on July 4th. Um, so July 4th, 1831, James Monroe, the fifth president, died at the age of 73. So uh, he'd been ill for some time, right? Um, local and national newspapers were quick to report after Monroe's death that they thought his July 4th passing was a remarkable uh, coincidence, at the least since Thomas Jefferson and John Adams had also died on July 4th, 1826. So three of the first five presidents uh, died on July 4th. Wow, what a coincidence. Actually, it's not a coincidence. Um, people who 
uh, study business and you know, science and medicine, they have to know how to calculate probabilities. So what are the odds of three people dying on one day of the year? One particular day of the year, three people are going to die. Someone wants to make a parlay with you. What odds do you give them? All right. The date, 7-4. What do you do? Well, there's 365 days in a year. One divided by 365 is .0027. So for three people, uh, that is um, uh, cubed. So .0027 times .0027 times .0027 equals .0000002. I was so tempted to say O'Reilly. Anyway, those are the odds. Those are the odds. Point oh 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 seven o's two that three people will die on the same day and it will be coincidence. Now I asked Chat GPT these uh, same questions. Chat GPT great for a lot of math things, basic probability calculations. Um, three of the first five presidents dying on July fourth. I asked that straight up. One in nine hundred seventy-two million. You can see the exact prompt if you look on my Twitter at Puppy Trades, um, at Puppy Trades. Chat GPT uh, presidents should do it there anyway, or at Puppy Trades, uh, Chat GPT nine seventy-two. Anyway, you get the gist. Um, that was all just to refresh that how kind of numbers are, numbers are used in ritual sacrifice. So five years after, um, five years after. John Adams and Thomas Jefferson uh, died on July 4th, 1826. Um, James Monroe died on July 4th, 1831. So the distance between those two dates, and keep in mind the year for the first two was 1826, is 1,826 days later, right? 1,826 days after two, th two presidents died on July 4th, 1826, a third president died on July 4th. All right, show that to your math friends. Seriously, if you have any friends who like are big in math, they, they do math for a living, they build buildings for a living, have them calculate the probabilities of this for a living. I mean, for these people, you know, doctors, engineers, have them calculate. They do math for a living. Show them this. I promise you could, they can do this. I promise you could, they can do this math. Show them this math and say, what is the objective probability? Three of the first five presidents died on July 4th and that two of them died um, on July 4th, 1826. The third died on July 4th, 1831, which was 1,826 days later. They can figure out the probability. Uh, they're just not going to want to. So uh, Gematria is the Catholic. Uh, it's the ancient. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Gematria is the ancient practice of coding numbers into uh, letters. Okay, so giving numbers a numerical value, or sorry, giving letters a numerical value, right? So if you think about it, there's no reason that the letters should be in order. There isn't. There's no reason at all, at all, the letters should be in the order that they are, okay? Um, so each letter is in a specific order because each letter has a numerical value, okay? And giving these letters numerical values is called gematria, okay? Think of it like music, right? So if you go to like a young young people's musical recital right you know they have a musical recital when they're all playing right and good it's going to sound like they're in harmony right and then once one of them plays a really clunky note right you're going to hear it it's going to sound like that's off right so gematria is, is kind of figuring out the vibrations associated with letters and numbers and giving them uh numerical values um and, and even you know very deeply you know th this gets extremely deep into the bible um, I've read the Bible cover to cover twice, okay? And I've gotten much deeper into my religious studies than that. Um, eventually, this is, it's, it's impossible to get away, um, you know, from at least knowing this, but refresher on Gematria. So I only quote four ciphers. There are more than four ciphers, but there are four base ciphers, and I will only ever uh, mention um, four ciphers. So the first cipher is calculated like this, K- is the 11th letter so its value is 11 <laughs> there all right you can figure that one out okay um, the second cipher that's called um, the ordinal cipher by the way just taking it in order 
the second cipher um, is the uh, reduction cipher. So because k is the 11th letter, 1 plus 1 equals 2. So k's value isn't 11, it's 2. That's called reduction. Okay. The other cipher, the other two ciphers are reverse and reverse reduction. Reverse is just ordinal in reverse. So instead of A being the first letter, in the reverse alphabet starting with Z, A is the 26th letter. letter. So A would be um, 26. That would be its numerical value. Okay. In reverse reduction, A would be 2 plus 6, the alph alphabetic order in reverse, then re reducing it. So A is the 26th letter. 2 plus 6 is 8. So A's value in the reverse reduction cipher would be 8. Okay, anyway, those are the four base ciphers of gematria. Um, that is an ancient uh, Hebrew and Greek practice, and that's important to know because the Bible was originally written uh, in Hebrew and Greek. Okay, so um, we'll get into religious history in a second. Refresher on gematria and Catholic sacrifice. So the U.S. has had two Catholic presidents and the word Catholic equals 35 and, oh, I'm so sorry. That is supposed to say 46. You'll see, you'll see why I meant to say, you'll see why I meant to say 42 in a second. I meant to say 46. So I'm going to cover that up. The U.S. has had two Catholic presidents and Catholic equals 35 and 46 in two base ciphers of gematria. So in the reduction cipher, it equals 35, and it equals 46. Those presidents are JFK, the 35th, the 35th president, and Joe Biden, who is the 46th. Does JFK and Joe Biden's son uh, dying at age 46 seem like a ritual sacrifice or coincidence? And also Catholicism um, in its accepted form worships sacrifice. Now, I have beliefs about what real christianity is what real catholicism no what real christianity is um but real catholicism technically is whatever the pope says it is I mean, that, that there is the magisterium of the catholic church um and catholics if you've ever gone to catholic mass all christian denominations um you know celebrate uh the last supper tradition jesus giving his body and blood um up to you know his disciples and breaking bread and saying, this is my body, do this in remembrance of me. But in the Catholic Church, it's, the, it's, it's much more serious than other Christian denominations. And this kind of idea of blood, and Jesus' blood, right, and his body and sacrifice is much more stressed in Catholicism. And I would say that is by far, you know, what is really kind of separating Catholicism from other uh, denominations of Christianity is that, Catholicism really focused on, on that sacrifice aspect, that suffering aspect, Jesus' blood. Every single Sunday, a Catholic has to show up um, and eat uh, the Eucharist, which is the body of Jesus Christ. Um, and they have the blood of Jesus Christ, which is represented by wine uh, as well. Um, there are many, you know, Catholic sacraments, and I'm well-versed in them, and I don't mean to go off into this spiel on Catholicism, but being Catholic is very serious. I would say being, being Catholic like Joe Biden and JFK are Catholic, uh, that is not something to overlook, like how you hear, oh, hey, this person grew up in California, or oh, hey, this person, you know, they really, you know, enjoy being in the high school band. No, being uh, Catholic and um, you know, really being in, in, indoctrinated into that religion is uh, almost on the lines of how people think of Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, um, and Orthodox Judaism. Uh, and I've even compared it to um, the uh, Scientology Church, where it is a borderline cult. Okay, anyway, Catholicism separates itself from other sections of Christianity because they really focus on that kind of pagan idea of sacrifice, right? So um, G JFK and um, Joe Biden, uh, they are the only two Catholic presidents. JFK uh, was the 35th president, and he died at age 46. Joe Biden is the 46th president, and 
his son, Bo Biden, died at age uh, 46. So um, Catholicism worships ritual sacrifice and believes it is good that God, who is all powerful, willingly had his son tortured and killed. This is celebrated with communion. So, um, you know, most sections of Christianity uh, participate in the Eucharist. Um, you know, it's something that they do to commemorate the Last Supper. And remember that passage of the Bible in Catholicism, it's much more serious. It's a, it's a sacrament that you have to take part in every week or your soul isn't clean, right? And you're going to hell um, unless you have a very serious reason why you missed um, eating Jesus' blood on Sunday, okay? We'll get into uh, more proof about how that is, is more of a historical fact than my opinion later in this presentation. So, um, gematria and, and how sports get involved. Okay, well, what does this have to do with Kobe? Well, just in case you're kind of thrown off by all that, Kobe Bryant, in case you didn't know, was on his way to Catholic Mass when he died in a helicopter crash. We'll get into more of that Catholic thing later. So how does sports get involved? I want to give credit to Jamatria underscore K, um, Kayla, under, uh, Kayla Deco Talker, incredible account, um, really awesome influence on the community. Uh, I, I didn't quote her directly because she added some things that I don't want to add in this video um, because censorship, to be honest. Um, but basically, it is officially a fact that 2,977 people died on September 11th. One of them was Pete Davidson's father. Pete Davidson's father uh, was one of 2,977 people to die on 9-11. Wow, that is an official fact. Okay? It's also an official fact um, that Seth Curry went to Davidson College. So, Seth Curry, uh, he broke... Am I saying Steph or Seth? I don't even care. You know which Curry. The Curry that... You know which Curry, okay? The, the, you know which Curry. Don't don't make me feel bad about saying Steph or Seth. I can't think of it right now. The Curry that's famous, all right? <laughs> he went to Davidson. Um, and Pete Davidson was attending his basketball game, a very important basketball game for this Davidson, um, you know, former player because – I believe this picture, um, and what I didn't include was the date that this picture was taken, but this picture was taken um, when uh, Curry broke the three-point record. The all-time three-point record was broken by uh, Steph Curry, okay? So Pete Davidson is wearing a Michael Jackson hoodie the night Curry breaks the NBA three-point record. Curry went to Davidson College and was drafted into the NBA the day Michael Jackson died. Okay, so on that shirt, on that shirt is a picture of Michael Jackson. So Pete Davidson is attending a basketball game where uh, Curry, who went to Davidson, is breaking the three-point shooting record. He's breaking that record with 2,900 and 78 three-pointers. All right, let me repeat that. Curry's 2,978 three-pointer was the record, the all-time three-point record. And 2,977, which was the record beforehand, is how many people died on 9-11. One of them was Pete Davidson's father. So this, this picture is really important. I know it's hard to grasp, but this is how sports, news, and entertainment are connected. And this is just the simplest, biggest way to understand it. So let's go one more time like we've never heard it. Pete Davidson's father died on September 11th with... And he was one of 2,977 people. Pete Davidson was in attendance when Seth Curry 
who went to Davidson College, broke the NBA record of 2,977 three-pointers made. That night, Pete was in attendance wearing a Michael Jackson jersey and a Michael Jackson sweater, and Michael Jackson died the day Curry was drafted into the NBA. So that's how sports, news, and world events are scripted together. 9-11, 2,977 people die. Pete Davidson, his father was one of those people. He's wearing a Michael Jackson jersey. Michael Jackson was drafted into, uh, sorry, Seth Curry was drafted into the NBA the day uh, that Michael Jackson died on the anniversary of Michael Jackson's death. No. Curry went to Davidson College and was drafted into the NBA not on the anniversary. I'm sorry. He was drafted into the NBA on the day of Michael Jackson's death. June 25th, 2009. Which also happens to be Del Curry's birthday. So this this is what Del Curry's father's birthday. So Del Curry is Seth's father. Um, his birth. <laughs> this is why I'm saying don't feel bad if this is hard to wrap your head around. Don't feel bad if this is hard to wrap your head around. It's gonna take a bit. I promise. It's gonna be worth it, but it's gonna take a bit. Cause it's a lot. Let's try this one more time from the top. Just really hammer it down. Some important dates. June 25th, 2009 was the day Michael Jackson died. It is also Del Curry's birthday, who is this Curry's father. This Curry went to Davidson University, and this Davidson is wearing a Michael Jackson sweater. This Davidson is celebrating and in attendance for this Curry breaking the NBA three-point record of 2,977 three-pointers made with Pete Davidson in attendance and his father was one of 2,977 people who died in Guess what team they're playing? Can you guess what team they're playing? Do I need to say it? New York. All right, so black men are being ritually sacrificed by a numerical code. Um, this is a screenshot of a previous tweet, um, but it's important to understand that um, black men uh, need to know that Jesus was black, at least in Catholic faith and occult faith, and Jewish faith. The highest members of the Catholic and Jewish faith who have formed this secret society um, believe that Kobe Bryant... <laughs> you'll understand why I said Kobe Bryant in a second. Because he played Jesus in this ritual, sacrifice, that we're going to go over Right now, So the number 42 has an esoteric connection to black men. The highest members of Catholic and Jewish faith believe Jesus was a black man, which is why the book of Revelation 114 says his hair was white like wool, right? So Chadwick Boseman, Kobe Bryant, right? They have these uh, black athletes in these 42 rituals, right? Kobe Bryant died um, at age 41 which is the 42nd year of your life. And then when you turn 42, you've completed your 42nd year, right? So um, the Bible says that Jesus' hair was white like wool, all right? The book of Matthew begins with the 42 generations of Jesus, and the book of Luke also uh, states the 42 generations to Jesus. And that is why 42 is such an important number um, with black history in gematria, um, a lot of important words with black history equate 
to 42. Slavery is one of them. Uh, we'll get into uh, that exact same cipher, um, which is reverse reduction, that slavery equals 42. Martin uh, equals 42. And an extremely popular show uh, for black Americans in the 90s was called Martin. And in the re reverse reduction cipher, Martin equals 42. And the main character of the show, Martin, lives in apartment apartment 42, even though he only lives on the 42nd floor. Um, I have more proof for the 42 uh, ritual. Um, uh, Brittany Griner, she was um, drafted into the WNBA on, um, on Jackie Robinson Day, and uh, she wore number 42, and she was detained in Russia uh, for 42 weeks. Um, so uh, kind of more of this uh, imagery. And for those who say, well, I thought you said black men. Um, I'm not going to get into this, but um, technically, Brittany Griner, um, and this is actually a fact about her specifically, um, that was long before this movement became popularized. Brittany Griner is technically a hermaphrodite. Um, so 42 black men, uh, ritual sacrifice. She was drafted on Jackie Robinson Day, who wore number 42. Now, the number 42 uh, is associated with Jackie Robinson and and black history. And Jackie Robinson Day wasn't on um, the usual date that it normally is in the spring in 2020. Uh, it was in August. It was in August um, because of the events of 2020, right? So kind of like how LeBron and, uh, sorry, LeBron wins the finals on Father and Daughter Day with the Lakers, um, the year that Kobe and his daughter die in a helicopter crash, um, and the, it happens to be on Father Daughter Day uh, because of the events of 2020, they had to reschedule. Where well, Chadwick Boseman, he died on um, the same Jackie Robinson Day celebration that the MLB normally has uh, in the spring, but they moved Jackie Robinson Day. And they moved it to the exact same day that Chadwick Boseman, uh, who played Jackie Robinson in the movie 42, uh, died. So the man who played Jackie Robinson in the movie 42 died on Jackie Robinson Day when everyone's wearing the number 42. Kind of reminds you how Kobe's number is 24, which is 42 backwards. Anyway, if you add up uh, the letters of Kobe Bryant in that full reduction Sorry, in that uh, reduction cipher, where you take the letters of the alphabet such that K, the 11th letter, um, is uh, has a value of 2 because um, the digits of 11, 1 plus 1, equal 2. If you take all of Kobe Bryant's letters in his name and you add them together, you get a value of 41. So this is kind of how the ritual sacrifice code works. Kobe Bryant dies at age 41, which is the 42nd year of his life, um, and he uh, he equals 41 in uh, gematria. So that's one reason that we accepted it. Another was because there was all this predictive programming uh, before it happened. There's been all this predictive programming and kind of a reaffirmation after it happened um, to get us to accept it, right? So he, he equals 41 in one of four based gematria ciphers and his his death is foretold in a helicopter crash right uh chadwick boseman dies on jackie robinson day you know it was originally reported that he died at age 42 um i still have screenshots of that but they had to change his name change his age to uh, uh 43 because people caught on so it wasn't just that kobe bryant equals 41 did you know that pope francis um, he was born on December 17th. Um, so his birthday is December 17th. That means that when Kobe died um, on his way to Catholic Mass, it was uh, 41 days um, up to and including, between and including uh, Pope Francis's birthday. Um, Kobe Bryant died 41 days later, right? So his name equals 41 in Gematria, Right, this kind of Catholic and Jewish religious idea, right? Kobe Bryant playing the Christ figure, you know, being sacrificed, 
right? And then he dies 41 days after the Pope's birthday. And we'll get into religious tradition. Kobe Bryant is called the Black Mamba. And a lot of sects of Christianity believe that Catholicism is kind of the bad egg. That that actually, uh, when the Bible is always talking about um, in the, the New Testament and the book of Revelation and John, when the Bible is talking about, um, you know, the false Christ, right, the Antichrist, the fake church, you know, the pseudo-Christian religion, that they're referring to Catholicism. We'll get into um, outside sources for that on the next slide. But remember, in uh, Christianity, the devil is represented by the serpent, right? So, you know, Kobe Bryant's called the Black Mamba, you know, the day before LeBron passes him in the scoring record on a uh, court with a bunch of, uh, you know, black snakes on it, you know, he dies. And um, this in this Catholic and Jewish tradition, Kobe Bryant's name equals 41 uh, in Gematria. He dies on the 41st day of his age. And this is a picture of the inside of the Vatican. A lot of people think this looks like snakes kind of alluding and even confirming um, other religions' ideas that Catholicism is kind of represented or represents the Antichrist or even is the Antichrist. Um, so more church history. This is just to give outside sources for uh, the idea that some um, sects of Christianity believe Catholicism uh, is the Antichrist. Um, uh, talked about many times in Revelation, Thessalonians, uh, the book of John. So this is kind of deeper into Christianity. It's why I wanted to give a place for, you know, kind of people who weren't as versed in you know christianity and religions and you know rituals and ideas that are esoteric like this to kind of stop and just kind of think for themselves you know people who are good at probabilities people who are good at you know calculating probabilities they should be able to look at what i talked about you know with the, the president's dying on 7-4 and all the you know events leading up to kobe's death and how it was foretold and say that's not a that's not a coincidence, but uh, for some ch church history in this, I, this esoteric idea of the Catholic Church representing, um, you know, uh, the devil and uh, the Antichrist, which is why, you know, there, there's this, you know, snake imagery um, associated with the, the Catholic Church. And Kobe died on the 41st day of the Catholic Pope's um, age, you know, and he was on his way to Catholic Mass, right? So it's kind of this ritualistic idea. Um, the claim that the Pope is the Antichrist has been part of uh, anti-Catholic rhetoric since the Reformation when it was needed to justify the Protestant reformers' desire to leave the Catholic Church. Thus, the Lutheran Book of Concord states, the Pope is the real Antichrist who has raised himself over and set himself against Christ. Accordingly, just as we cannot adore the devil himself as our Lord or God, so we cannot suffer his apostle, the Pope, or Antichrist to govern us as our head or Lord. Okay, so the Presbyterian and Anglican Westminster Confession states, there is no other head of the church but the Lord Jesus Christ, nor can the Pope of Rome in any sense be the head thereof, but is the Antichrist, but is that Antichrist, that man of sin, uh, and that son of perdition that exalteth himself in the church against Christ and all that is called God, uh, to make the prophecies of the Antichrist fit the Pope. Some even claim that the temple of God, in which the Antichrist pretends to be God, from Second Thessalon Thessalonians chapter two verse twelve, uh, chapter chapter two verse four, is the Vatican. Okay, so tying it all together, dying on his way to Mass. Kobe died. Kobe was on his way to Catholic Mass with his daughter at age forty-one when he died in a helicopter crash that was eerily, even blatantly, predicted three times by media events. Um, and just to add, once again, later that year, the Los Angeles Lakers won the championship um, with, uh, with uh, on Father Daughter Day. And then even later after that, um, Karen Bryant, Karen Bryant became the GM of the Los Angeles Sparks, whose colors are also purple and gold. Um, and her birthday is 824, like Kobe Bryant's 824 number. So they confirmed this before, they confirm it after. This was a sacrifice, all right? If you add up the letters of Kobe Bryant's name, such as K, such that K, the 11th letter, has a value of 2, because 1 plus 1 equals 2, you get 41. This is known as the full reduction cipher of Gematria. Kobe's death at age 41 was also 41 days after Pope Francis' birthday. 
Kobe is known as the Black Mamba. Some Christian denomina denominations, such as the Lutheran Book of Concord, um, and also Presbyterian and Anglican West Westminster uh, Confession, um, believe the Pope is the false Christ, referred to often in the New Testament. The snake represents Satan, and Kobe, a black man in the 42nd year of his life, is the sacrificial Christ. Black men are ritually sacrificed by numer numerical code in Christ rituals um, because the occult believe Jesus was black. 